Nice to see you here for the meeting. So we'll go ahead and call it to order. It's about 4 o'clock, and, and we have a chance to review the minutes. And if you've had a chance to review them, are there changes or corrections? Seeing none, if, uh, make a motion to make accept motion. as written. Motion. I'll second. Second by KC. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. The ayes have it. I hope you've had a chance to look at our agenda, and you'll see that uh, the next item on the agenda today is the presentation and the discussion of the draft master plan for Arcadia Lake. Casey, you want to? Yeah, thank you. Uh, Casey Moore, I'm the Interim Parks and Recreation Director. I want to introduce Julie with Land Plan, who's been working with us diligently for so many months now. And I think uh, this is definitely not the final plan, but we're getting fairly far down the road, and she's going to check in and give us a full update. And I believe um, after, after her update, there will be an opportunity for any questions or, or comments. So I'll turn it over to Julie. Um, well, it's a pleasure to be here and to see you all again. I'm sorry I've got my back to the rest of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll turn around when there's questions at the end. Um, so this is the this is the presentation. Um, well, I'll tell you what we're gonna what we're gonna do. We're gonna go through a little bit of introductions. I think I've I've introduced myself to several groups before. But I work for Land Plan Consultants. Um, we are landscape architects and planners. And so we are doing the master plan for this whole project, but there are several consultants on our team. Um, one of them is Joe Moore, um, our campground consultant. We also have a financial consultant and a trails consultant. So um, there's a lot of people that are involved in this project from our side. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about where we are in the process. We're going to look at the results of the public survey that, um, that the city helped with. And then we're going to look at the planned amenities for different parks and talk about what the next steps are. So this will be a quick overview of where we're at. Um, so what we've done is we've completed all the way through phase four, which is the master plan development phase. Um, the first one was data collection, facility assessments was phase two, visioning and framework was phase three. Phase four is when you actually put stuff on a plan. You start to look at space allocation and adjacencies and put things on a plan. Um, phase five that we're in right now um, is the phase where we take it all and then we say, okay, well, how much is all this going to cost? What are the priorities? What should come first? So we're actually in phase five. Um, we've wrapped up phase four, and the final plan will be delivered in May. Um, so the survey, um, these are some of the results from the survey, and it was really it was pretty fascinating. There were over 4,000 people that responded to the survey, which was awesome. Um, there weren't a whole lot of questions. We wanted to just direct their attention to, you know, where are you, where are you coming from, how often do you visit the lake, and the other question we asked them was, which amenities would you like to see funded? In the future, so not necessarily just what do you enjoy doing, because maybe what you enjoy doing is already great and doesn't need more funding. So we kind of geared it toward what would you like to see funded in the future. So this was where people came. I know this was how many times do you visit the lake, and most were several times, um, several times a year. Um, these these were what the results looked like for the different um, amenities that people wanted to see funded. So the highest ranking amenity was the lakeside restaurant. Um, Next was walking trails, hiking, fishing, um, the lake shore, or sorry, the lake store <laughs> with bait, um, and then swim beaches, and, and it just goes on from there. Um, but another interesting piece of this was all of the um, open question or, or sorry, open comments that were given. So if you didn't want to select one of those already um, already given answers for the amenities that you wanted to see, you could put in your open comment. So these were these were the results. We grouped them based on what type of comment it was. Um, so access was a big one. It, it had to do with parking, ADA, or just getting in quickly to the park. So having a bypass, if you've got an annual pass, those kinds of things. 20, 20 people commented on that. Uh, another big one was camping, having um, upgraded utilities and being able to make reservations. That had 12 comments. Uh, fishing and having more docks, 14 comments. Nature was a big deal for people. I think there's a lot of people that when they hear master plan, they say, I like it the way that it is, and please don't overdevelop it. So that was the majority of the nature comments, keep it natural. Um, reservations, again, that, that was mentioned um, with camping, but also separately, 15 comments for that. 
um, 40 comments <laughs> on restrooms, which is fascinating, but there are a lot of restrooms at the lake. I know Nicole knows this, <laughs> but um, that is a lot to keep up with, and they were all built in the same time period. And so um, a lot of comments on upkeep of restrooms, upgrading restrooms, putting showers in at overnight camping locations. Um, and then trails, 67 comments on trails. That was It was already ranked second highest in the actual um, selected items, but then 67 open comments about trails. And the majority were um, asking for trails completely around the lake. And so that was kind of an interesting. Um, and then trash was also uh, a lot of comments on <laughs> just keeping the park clean. Uh, so just to kind of review, we've talked about this before, but we're trying to balance between revenue generation and sustainability. So the sustainability side is that nature side. You know, we want to keep it natural. We want it to look like the the lake area that it is right now. Um, but then the other side is if you want to keep it up, you also have to bring in some revenue. So we're trying to balance that. And these are some of the things that we've looked at. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take you on a tour around the lake. <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully it won't get confusing. So each time I'll bring you back to this map so you can kind of see which park we're at. Um, we're going to start at Carl Rearman Park, so the end of 33rd Street. It's on the southern end of the lake. And I'm going to show you some of the improvements that we're talking about making at each park so that you can get the big picture of what, what might go on. So Carl Rearman has kind of two pieces. Um, I'm going to figure out how to use this pointer. Okay, now it looks like I'm jittery. Uh, this is the existing um, equine area. So you come to the end of the road here, and there's a turnaround down there. And so if you're going out there to ride your horses, you might go to the end there, park your trailer. Um, it's a little difficult to get in and out of. Um, and so what we're talking about is a new equestrian area up here. Um, and then also Carl Rearman Park down here at the end. We're going to look at some improvements down there. Um, so this is that equestrian area, a little larger scale. And um, I've talked with Terry quite a bit. She's the representative from the um, task force, or the dream team, and uh, the one that was responsible for kind of communicating with the equestrian groups. And we talked a little bit about this other site um, in Prague, and it's a really nice area. It has overnight horse camping. It provides stable. So if you'll see, these are these have overnight um, camping spaces in between here. And then this brown area up here, those are stables. So if you're staying overnight, you can take your horses out of the trailer. <laughs> they can hang out in the stable during the day or whenever they're not being ridden. Um, there's... Uh, there's a restroom and a playground so that people that are staying there overnight feel like they've actually got some facilities and some amenities and a pavilion down here um, and then some other parking over on this side. And we tried to leave a large buffer um, in between this uh, residential roadway and then there's a utility easement here that creates a nice buffer between other residences. Um, so these are the kinds of activities that you would expect to see there, people coming in with their horse trailers, being able to stay overnight, having facilities to use. Okay, and then we're going to move down the street to Carl Rearman. This is how it looks today. Um, it's a little bit barren. It is phase one of a multi-phase um, design for this park. And some of the things that you'll notice are missing are the a dock connection down here, and there's going to be a dock over here, and there's no boat ramp over there. <laughs> and um, there are no restrooms or playgrounds or anything. There, um, there are some picnic tables out here. So there's not right now there's not a whole lot to draw people out to that location. And so some of the things that we've talked about... Um, so this is, this is the full build-out plan. So um, as you come in, you would the boat ramp would be installed at the end here. Um, there would be boat parking, boat trailer parking here. So this could be another location to kind of ease the amount of boat traffic trying to get in at the other boat ramps. Um, there's not a lot of shade out there, and it's hard to plant trees that will survive because the soil is very rocky at this location. Um, so having some shade structures over the picnic areas. This is all day use at this park. Um, 
having the kayak, um, this would be a kayak launch. It could also be used for other things, but um, you'll see a picture of that in just a minute. This is a really good location for kayakers to enter the water. Uh, and then a courtesy dock up at this end. And a playground, there's some existing trees down at this end, so tucking the playground in next to the existing trees where there's shade, and um, a large pavilion and a restroom. So these are some pictures of what that boat parking, boat and trailer parking would look like, a boat ramp, and then um, a courtesy dock. And these are some pictures of a large pavilion, um, a nature-themed playground, and shade structures. This top one is a shade structure over individual picnic tables. And then a kayak launch. If you're not a kayaker, um, there's some cool ways to be able to help you get into your kayak as you're stepping off the docks. <laughs> Makes it a little easier. Um, so that's what that kayak dock would be. Um, this is the extension. So you can see on this one, this is Carl Ruman today down here. And then we're talking about extending a road up this direction with a loop drive, having a restroom down at the end, and providing more picnic spaces along the edge of the lake. So there's some really pretty areas back in there, and um, that would just give even more day-use picnic areas. Um, one of the biggest fee generators is day use, and people are always asking for more picnic sites. And so this would be an excellent way to um, invigorate Carl Roman Park and to bring people to that area. Okay, so we're moving up the up to the north um, to Scissor Tail Park next. Um, the parts of Scissor Tail that we'll look at are the park entrance as you come in, um, the maintenance building and pavilion down here by the um, camping areas, and then some new RV camping. So this is the entrance. Um, right now, when you enter the park, you come in and you go um, further down before you hit the entrance gate. We're talking about moving that up so that you pay before you get in and can go to the RV area. Um, and you'll see this This is the newest building at Edmond Park, and so we're looking at buildings like that, um, but also a kiosk eventually that you can pay at um, with a credit card or being able to pay in advance. Um, and then a gate system that keeps people from entering unless they've paid and a space for somebody to park. And then if, if you can't pay or don't want to pay or can't seem to get the kiosk to work, which I can't imagine that it would never work, but then you can turn around and, and come back out um, or you can go into the park. Uh, this area, we're going to extend a roadway and have additional RV parking sites. There's about 20 RV sites per space, so what we'd like to do is have those be full hookup RV sites. There's currently only 10 full hookup sites um, in the park, and it's not at this park. It's at Central State Park, um, and that's a great revenue generator, and there's a lot of demand, so we think that that would be a really good addition. Um, and this is just a picture of what we're talking about with the RVs. Um, there's already a large cleared area out here, and these are both um, outside of the flood plain, so um, you can't see that on this graphic, but we looked very closely at where the flood plain is, trying to keep all new amenities up out of um, flood areas. Um, and then we're going to go down to the maintenance and the pavilion. Um, so on the pavilion, I'm not showing any um, upgrades, but at this time, but what we've been talking about is that each pavilion needs a facelift. And so they're not bad on their own, but they could use some improvements. And so we're going to propose, as we move down the road, we're going to propose some um, ideas to make them look new and look nice, not tearing them down completely, but upgrading them. Um, but this, uh, the maintenance building would be right here near the Campo site. So this one is the Campo site. You'd have a small maintenance building. Um, this picture I just used because it had a utility vehicle, but the idea is to have space for at least three utility vehicles and then also a small building um, that supplies can be kept in so that um, it's a little bit easier to maintain parks on the south side of the lake. Spring Creek Park. Um, off of 15th Street. There's a lot of a lot of things to talk about at this one. Um, we'll start here with the park entrance door and the equestrian parking. The equestrian trail takes off down this way, and you you hit the Spring Creek uh, or sorry Scissor Tail RV 
um, location if you go that way. And then as you enter into the park, this park is currently um, all day use, but we're proposing putting some glamping areas, which is glorified camping. <laughs> it's um, it's fancy camping. So tiny, tiny cabins or yurts, um, something that you can come and stay in. Um, so those those are right in this area. Um, beach improvements and added parking down here and picnic areas as you move up into this area. A fuel dock, um, ADA access at this dock, and a new restroom um, for that area over there. So we'll kind of look at each area. This is the entrance. Um, as you come into the park, same thing with the gate and an um, entry building. Some spaces here for staff to park. Um, a general store, so you would actually come into the park, pay to get into the park, and then you can come around and use the general store. Um, and this is just trailer parking if you're going to the general store and you need a place to park your boat trailer. Um, if you don't come into the park and you're coming down to this trailhead parking that currently exists, we're going to add um, another bay of trailhead parking and then also add an equestrian um, parking area for horse trailers that just want to come here for day use, um, and then some parking spaces down here at the end. Um, okay, and then the next area we're going to look at is the glamping area and the beach improvements. So this is just a picture of, um, this area would be all yurts, and we've talked about hard-sided yurts for um, to help with vandalism issues. There are some soft-sided, more tent-like canvas structures uh, but what we're proposing in this location is something a little bit more vandal resistant. Um, so this grouping over here are yurts. Um, each one would have their own outdoor fire pit area, a couple parking spaces, um, a little trail that can take you through this area. And what we're proposing is to eliminate this turnaround drive in this zone so that whether you're staying at these tiny cabins or whether you're staying at the yurts, you feel like you have um, beachfront access or lakefront access uh, without people driving through that space. Um, so these are the tiny cabins. You can see a picture of what that's like. Um, and then the improvements along the beach, we really talked about um, the fact that people like to just park all over the grass, and when it's a really busy day, there's not enough parking down in that area. So providing some actual designated parking spaces, making it a little bit easier for people to pull in so that they're not just parking all over um, the grass and then adding some more day-use picnic areas along the edge of the lake. Um, this is not currently there, this parking lot, um, but the beach gets a lot of use. And so to provide extra parking, this area up here is flat and would be really conducive to parking. So to provide some extra spaces there um, would help keep people from driving into this area and parking all over the grass. <laughs> and then um, there's a proposal for this ADA access this was actually proposed um, by an engineering firm prior to the master plan, so that's the ADA access down to the beach. Um, that is that's it for that area. Um, as we move to the north, these picnic spaces, this is all new, um, and picnic spaces up here, and we'll look at the fuel dock. So... This would be a new picnic area out on this peninsula. There are some really great views, some nice trees. So being able to park your vehicle here, have a whole other area for day-use picnicking that's near the water um, with nice views and shade. And then um, this is a group RV area, and we were talking about putting in some permanent picnic tables and amenities along that area. Um, this is the location where the fuel dock would go. Is also the location on the original plans for the lake um, for a marina, a fuel dock, something that was going to extend out into the water. So there aren't, um, there's not a whole lot of information on that, but based on the grades, this would be a really good location for something like that. Um, and you can see that when we talk about a fuel dock, this is what we're talking about, just a location that you can pull up to with your boat, put some fuel into your boat and then zoom off. You don't have to actually pull it out of the lake and go find the nearest gas station. So um, that's what that is. Um, and then the, the last part here, this is ADA improvements to this dock also. So instead of trying to get down this steep gangway, you would um, work your way down a ramp to get down. Um, and then the, the only other thing on Spring Creek we talked about um, – a restroom, I pointed out. There's one restroom there um, at the west end of the park, and it's a vault toilet restroom. 
And so to upgrade that to something um, with with plumbing would be really nice. So we're proposing that also. Um, I just, okay, so Edmond Park is where we're headed next. Um, these are all the areas that we're going to look at. We'll just start to look through them. Uh, the future police substation and the park entry and boat staging area. So these plans, I've, I've added them to this master plan, but they're still a work in progress, the police substation. Um, but basically the idea is to have some buildings there. There's been some discussion about whether the park office will eventually move to that location too. I think that's still being discussed. Um, so that's what this this facility is. It's just based on the sketches that have come out so far. The trail, the main trail, will be routed along the um, the south edge of that parking. And so at this location, this is one where um, when you come into the lake, there's only 150 boats allowed out on the water at a time. If you come in and it's not your turn, and there's already 150 boats, you will be waiting um, to be released to go put your boat on the water. So what happens is um, people come up to the entry gate, and if they're told, you know, sorry, you're number 151, <laughs> then what they're going to do is they're going to be allowed to pay and come in. They'll come through the gate, and then they'll, they'll drive around here, and they'll pull into space number one for boat staging. So um, what happens is when, when it's your turn and somebody leaves the park with a boat, you will be notified by the person at this gatehouse that it's now your turn to go in. So it has to be in close proximity so they can flag you in, and then you'll know that it's your turn to go. And what they've experienced before is if you let these people come in with their boats and they're waiting and you let them get too far into the park, they'll just kind of keep going. <laughs> so this is very strategic, trying to have a spot where they could stage and wait um, and have eyes on the gatehouse. Uh, and then also some additional parking for the people that are working here um, at that facility. Uh, the next spot is lake maintenance facility and the multi-use fields. So just directly south of that boat staging area, um, there's currently a building here that will be taken down, and what will go in place um, is a maintenance facility. And so there's some pictures on the next slide, but basically we looked at um, Hafer Park and the maintenance facility there and how that functions and then tried to emulate that here. Um, we also looked at, I believe there's 37 spaces um, for seasonal workers. So having a spot where you can actually have your seasonal workers come and work out of a facility. Um, and then there's potential to put a building right up here um, so if the park office does not get combined with that police substation, it, it might also be a good location to put a future park office, um, lake office, down here. Um, this residence is staying, um, so that's a residential property and the drive-in. And then this area right now is just a really large green space. Um, we talked a little bit about the fact that it could be programmed and used as ball fields. Um, there is one one backstop currently, and so Nicole and the lake get calls to be able to use that for um, ball clubs that want to come out and play. And so we talked about the uses of that area, and there's also a lot of um, activities and programs that require overflow parking periodically throughout the year. So whether it's a race or a triathlon or whatever's going on somewhere down in that area, there's a lot of reasons to need this for overflow parking. Um, but we talked about having um, backstops and benches and water available and then a batting cage over here on the side. So that's why these ball fields are kind of shown faded back because they won't be officially um, ball fields. You won't see the lines. You won't see the bases. But they will be spaces that, you know, when people call and say, hey, do you have ball fields that we could use, um, they'll be able to program those um, so this is, these are just pictures. This is kind of the idea with a maintenance facility that would have four bays um, where you could actually drive into the maintenance facility and work on vehicles, and then also an adjacent space for offices, um, for maintenance crews. This is the facility at Hafer. Um, so you can kind of see they have the same kind of drive-through um, bays, a building uh, next to it, and then a longer storage building. 
And then this is the idea with the, the backstop, something that is off to the sides, doesn't impede the other uses out there, um, would still allow you to use it for parking, for overflow. And this is the idea for the um, batting cage off to the side. Uh, and then we'll move down to this area to the beach improvements. So this is the beach area. Um, it is highly used and loved by everyone. Um, it's It needs some amenities. We've talked about uh, there's some grade change there. We would like to do something like this with a hillside slide, maybe um, have some kind of a play amenity that kids can, can play on, have a lot more shade. So um, I think there's another picture of it. And then having hammock. Uh, posts and hammock posts you can they're they're really popular these days you can put the posts out there and not provide the hammocks you can provide the hammocks they could sell the hammocks at the store um, but basically you can bring your own or you can use one that's out there and just chill out under the trees we've purposely placed them in a few locations where there are trees out at the beach um, and also Another idea that we're throwing out there is mobile concessions. So um, there's quite a bit of issues with flooding at the beach area, whether it's the restroom facilities that are already out there, um, an erosion of the sand at the beach, and you can't really move the beach um, up away from the water. So what we're proposing is that um, any concessions, like uh, sales of things that would be at the general store, you could have some of that here at the beach. You could also have some um, food concessions at the beach, but we're not proposing a um, permanent building in that location because of flooding concerns. So there's a lot of options that we've discussed. Um, so that, let's see, there. I kind of zoomed by the... Okay, so this this just shows you in very small scale... Uh, this is this is the concession building. Um, there's currently a restroom building at this uh, beach, and then some stairs coming down or ADA access to get you down to the beach area. Some areas with um, the shade structures and some retaining to keep this area up a little bit higher so you can look out over the beach. And then um, hammocks and shade structures, and these are the slides coming down off the wall. There's some other minor improvements here, like some parking spaces, um, picnic area, and then some additional spaces near this um, pavilion. Um, okay, so on the west end of Edmond Park, we have looked at adding some camping, regular camping spaces to this area, um, some group camping and amenities for group camping, and then the fishing pond. Um, I think it's better to look at on this one, these camping spaces, the regular camping spaces that we're adding. We talked a little bit about um, the need to maybe have some camping areas where people can go if they have smaller children and they're a little bit worried about them being too close to the water and keeping their eyes on them all the time. This puts some campers um, up here next to the playground area. Um, and it's a nice nice spot for campsites. You're up near the playground, and then you could take this little walking trail to the fishing pond. So. Um, we'll look at that a little closer. So that's these spaces. They're near this existing playground. Um, and then what we're proposing up here are a couple more sites for um, group camps. So this is a heavily used group camp area for Boy Scouts and other um, other groups that like to come out there, um, have big activities and lots of people, and it's got a relatively small parking lot, so we would add another parking lot over here. Um, a little trail to, we're just calling it a pavilion. Um, it could be more like an amphitheater, but the seating doesn't really seem to be that big of a concern, but having a big um, pavilion that people could meet under is, is a big deal. And then a, a walkway that connects you over to the fishing pond. This um, brown area is a low ropes course, so you'll see a picture of that, but it's they're really cool. They're a lot of fun for team building. Um, not a lot of concern for people getting injured, but um, they do require you to work together, and there's uh, some adventure involved in that. So this area um, is currently, it, it was a fishing pond, but it doesn't hold water, so what we're proposing is lining it, adding some amenities with some shade structures and benches around the outside and turning it back into a fishing pond. So these are some pictures um, of a group pavilion, a low ropes course, and kids having fun fishing. Um, Central State Park, if you move a little bit to the east. 
So the first spot we'll talk about is boat storage and the park entry. Um, one concept that we discussed was having some dry boat storage. There's not enough room on this lake, and it would interfere with the boat counts on the water to have people be able to store their boats on the water. So another option is to have dry boat storage. So if you were going to the lake and you wanted to pick up your boat at the lake, you can leave it in your boat storage um, location and then pick it up as you come into the lake area and then you just park your trailer after you've offloaded into the water. Um, so that's, that's the concept here. There's currently a house there um, that's no longer going to be. Um, I think it's slated for demolition. And then... Um, these are all different size RV stores. So some of them are RV stores. Some of them are smaller boat storage. Um, so you could come into this park and get to that location before you actually pay to enter the park. There's another option to be able to enter. Um, we'd have to revise the layout a little bit, but you could enter um, off of the highway also. <coughs> come in. Um, and then this is the entry gatehouse area. Similar idea with the boat staging. So if you're coming into this park and you're boat number 151, you get to wrap around here and wait until it's your turn. Um, at this spot, we talked about having ice um, and, uh, sorry, firewood storage um, so that you could sell that from this building. So if you wanted to do that, you come through here, wrap around park and purchase um, ice and firewood. And then as you come through the park, um, there's currently a gravel parking lot down here. I kind of left the outline of it so you could see. And what we're proposing here um, is about 80 parking spaces. There's a lot of people that come in and get on the trail from this location. Um, and then there's also a lot of people that want to go to the lake to meet their friend who has the boat. And so you drive to the lake, and then your friend with the boat wants to come and pick you up and take you down to the water. And so this would be a location where you could park your car, get on the boat, and go with your buddies. Um, okay, and then we're going to move to the west a little bit. So we were just here at the entrance. If you drive down this way, we're going to talk about adding some tiny cabins in this area and then the beach improvements to the south. So again, um, adding another loop of tiny cabins to this location. Um, no restroom proposed or anything because they each have their own. So um, it's kind of like hotel stay, but still out in the woods. Um, and then if you drive down this other road, you're at the beach. Some of these ideas are similar at this lake to have a lot of shade, um, some small retaining walls to just kind of keep this area up a little bit higher and help with erosion. This beach, we're proposing having paddle boats. Um, that was there once before. It seems to be a good location for paddle boats. And then um, this beach has the highest amount of erosion, and um, it costs a lot, and it's a lot of effort to bring sand in every year, every two years. Um, and so We've talked about different techniques. One that we're looking at is changing from a sand beach to possibly um, it's kind of like a gravel beach, a pebble beach. So we're looking at different options for that. Um, there's also some um, wave attenuation lines that you can put out in the water that might be an option. So we're just trying to figure out what would work best to make it less maintenance and to be able to make this um, beach function the way that it does. Um, and then, again, uh, mobile concessions. And this this beach currently has a restroom down here, but it floods. And I think it floods like halfway up the wall. <laughs> so it's a lot of flooding. So moving that um, restroom up the hill, and then you still have ADA access if you're walking up to the playground. There's ADA access up to the playground, and then you could walk over to the restroom um, and then down from that and across. Uh, and then we'll look at bobcat. So we were just down here at the beach, and we'll go over here to the west. Um, these ones are mostly upgrades to the existing facility, but um, there is some erosion issues with picnic areas on this side. So um, building those up with some small walls. Um, the parallel parking needs some um, erosion assistance along this edge. There's some confusion with picnic tables over here. So we've talked about eliminating one and moving one and um, restroom upgrades. But this, this park is mostly um, upgrades to existing facilities. 
Um, this is this picture is actually a picture of a restroom building that also has showers, and we're looking at that for several locations. I'll kind of talk about that at the end. One of the other um, things that we're looking at is um, doing retaining walls where it's necessary for erosion control, but doing it in a way that um, the blocks won't get up and walk away and be repositioned somewhere else. Sometimes when um, in the past, when they've used smaller block, they will get uh, relocated. And so either a large size block or actual concrete that um, will last a lot longer. Permanent solutions, right? <laughs> as permanent as we can get. Um, so the same, I, I'm going to skip over Cottonwood, but the same goes for that um, area. There were minor improvements. Um, there's a couple TP sites that are no longer there, and we're turning those into campsites. And then... Um, the rest of what goes on there is either restroom related, roadway improvements related. So not not a big amenity though that I can show you at that campground. Um, RV camping will be added. So if you if you didn't go to the boat dock there and you continue down this road, there's a nice area for RV camping and then um, some pavi sorry pavilion improvements. Uh, okay, so. This area doesn't currently exist, but what we'd like to do is propose some full hookup RV sites. This park, that um, previous part of the park, the Cottonwood Campground, that's the one that has the 10 full hookup RV sites currently. Um, so we'd like to add these sites over here, also full hookup. And then um, these pavilions all need renovations, so those same renovations that we're prop proposing um, for the other pavilions we would do here. This one in particular has amazing views and it seems to be um, the most popular when it comes to events so turning that one in particular i just put a picture up here with a dock or a i'm sorry a deck coming off of the front of it um, that one we're trying to look at ways to make that you know the premier event location so you'll see some graphics coming out soon um, with some suggestions on what to do for that um, these pictures are just full hookup RV pictures, and we've added some parking um, around the interior of this loop to f better facilitate that pavilion area. Uh, this next little area doesn't have a name, but it's the um, current lake office. <coughs> and that's the location where we're proposing the lake restaurant. So um, again, it had by far the most number of requests on the survey. Um, it seems to be a very popular idea. And when you go to the lake office and then you look out toward the lake, there is a fantastic, uninhibited view of the water. Um, so to have a restaurant perched in that location would be pretty awesome. And then this is associated um, parking. We've looked a little bit and talked about how you might um, fence that parking off so that it's used during times when the restaurant is open or, you know, do we want it to be open all the time to the public? We've had some experiences um, that I've been a part of in Tulsa recently where the restaurant went under because the parking was used by trail users. Um, and so I think there's just going to be a balance. And, you know, that trailhead parking lot is so popular <laughs> that if, if there's no space there, you're going to want to go park at the restaurant. So there's going to have to be some discussions about how to put those two uses close together. Um, the other cool part about this um, is that there are walking paths that come down here toward the lake. So you can imagine if you were going there to eat dinner and then you were able to just go for a walk afterward down to the water's edge and come back, that would be a really exciting place to eat. And then um, the other piece to talk about is this new water intake facility. Um, currently under construction. So you can see this is a rendering of what that might look like in the future. So there will be another building out there. Um, and then this is just an idea of what you might see if you were sitting in a lakeside restaurant. Um, and the last little piece to talk about is this northeast corner. We just keep calling it the northeast property. Um, it's right at the corner of Post Road and uh, Route 66. And this actually, um, this photo is a little bit older, so a lot of these trees have been removed. There's still a buffer of trees along the roadway. Um, this is a, an electrical substation, and that's going to get expanded. So we were told um, about three times the size that it is currently is what we need to leave space for. 
But then um, we had a lot of discussions about what this property could become. And the reason that the trees were removed is it's also been a laydown area for the water intake facility. So a lot of the, sorry, not laydown, but a location for the soil that's been removed from that location, they've been putting it here. So there's a lot of excess dirt in that location um, and a lot of property. And so we talked with the city about what could happen there, and we've talked about bike park facilities, um, nature playgrounds, places to walk. Um, this is a concept to just kind of show you. So this this rectangle is also this rectangle. Um, this blue area is all waterline easement, so there's a water line going in, um, and so there will be disturbance through that area. These orange lines down here are current um, trails, current soft surface trails. So there's a lot of bike use over in this area, a lot of trails going through, and it's a little bit sad that some of that will be disturbed with this water line uh, project. So part of the benefit um, here in introducing some bike facilities is that you're kind of giving back um, to that, you know, that user group that loves that area already. You're giving them a new facility. Um, this sort of orange area is buffer zone, so we want to keep as many trees and make it as natural as possible to kind of separate you from the roadway. Um, this yellow area would be amenities for people who are not necessarily cyclists, but they just want to come out and enjoy. Bless you. Um, so these would be areas for just general public to hang out, play in a playground, to go for a walk. Um, and then some of these trails, like the orange trail, it's a return trail uh, for bicycle users. So, you know, they go down one of these trails, it's all gravity fed, and then they get on this orange trail and come back. Um, but the idea is that you could also, if you're just somebody that's wanting to watch what's going on, you could walk on these perimeter trails and get to a spot, sit on a bench, and watch the cool people on their bikes that uh, know what they're doing. And then uh, this blue area here is parking. Um, so just some other pictures of what that space could become. Um, it would be a beautiful area to keep natural um, and then to just introduce some amenities that would be fun for the public to participate in. Uh, and the parking down there would function like a trailhead um, for all of those bike activities that go on. I think that's part of the reason why the lake office area is so overloaded um, with people using that trailhead parking, and so having something else near this bike facility would be really beneficial. Um, these are just some pictures of what our um, what the cycling consultant has proposed. They've done something similar, and they said, man, all that dirt that's out there, we could shape it, we could mold it, we could do the... <laughs> so they're, they're really excited. Um, so these are just some images of, of what they would like to create, and then just an overlay... Um, of how that kind of feels on that site. Um, so just so that you don't feel like we've skipped over other things that I haven't shown you, um, we've previously we talked about a lot of recommendations from the campground side. Um, so these are all things that we've looked at, expanding Wi-Fi, online reservation systems, um, having a store, glamping and yurts and tiny cabins and improving um, water and sewer and electric. Those are all things that will be part of this master plan, but um, you won't necessarily see them on any of those graphics that I showed you. Um, likewise, restroom recommendations, since restrooms were mentioned so many times. <laughs> um, we've actually gone through with Nicole and um, looked at the restrooms, figured out which ones are higher priority, figured out which ones need showers and which ones need to be demoed completely and which ones just need upgrades. So we have um, lists and all of that will be in the master plan. Um, from a trails perspective, I wanted to show you some of the information, but also um, let you know that we are, we're in the process of getting the GIS information on the trails from the city. Um, our trails consultant has gone out and ridden all of the trails, and he's come up with um, some improvement areas, some areas where he thinks that we could have a skills course um, down here near Spring Creek. He's looked at um, some boardwalk locations where there are dangerous locations on the soft surface trails that need to be signed or where the trail needs to be rerouted. So we've had some meetings with him, but I don't really, I don't want to release too much until we compare that with the GIS information. So trails are coming. Um, 
And roadways, too, in case you're thinking, well, what about paving? What about new roadways? That's also a component of the master plan. It just doesn't look really exciting on a graphic. <laughs> so improvements to roadways um, are definitely part of the process. So next steps, um, the next step is to take all this information that's now on a plan, and we're putting together cost estimates for each part, each park. And then um, what we're going to do is hand that to our, I guess, next Friday. We're having a meeting um, to kind of hand that off to the financial consultant. And she's already looked, um, let's see if that's it, yeah. She's already looked previously at cost recovery at the lake. And so this was the initial finding. She's, she studied all of the data that Nicole and the lake staff provided, which was amazing. Um, it was way more, I just was so thankful that we had a consultant for that because it was way more data than I wanted to deal with. But the findings were that the, um, on average, there was 90% cost recovery at the lake currently, which is amazing. So um, what she was saying down here, implying that a minimal fee increase would help to cover that. So if you want to increase fees, that'll help to cover um, where you don't meet current cost recovery goals. Um, but then a lot of the other amenities that we're proposing would also generate fees. So if you wanted to do dry boat storage, for instance, um, it's relatively low maintenance for the park staff, but generates fees um, for anybody that wants to use those rental facilities. Uh, so there, there are other amenities that we're proposing that will help with this cost recovery. But that's the next step that we're moving into. So in the month of March, we'll be looking at cost recovery, cost estimates, um, and then starting to prioritize what needs to come first, um, which things are critical to happen immediately. And then um, in the month of April, all that information is going to come together into a report-style document. And then we'll be at May. <laughs> And I believe that is, yeah, that's it. So I think now I get to ask if there's any questions you want to ask. Could we go ahead and just see if there's questions among the board members? I do have a question. Mm -hmm. okay, so On the uh, Spring Creek aspect of it, as far as the, the fuel, mm -hmm. uh, do you feel like that would be efficient since we have an on-queue and a Casey's and other nearby places to fill up before we get to the lake? Um, there's been a lot of discussion about the fuel dock. Um, I think what we're trying to do with the master plan is make sure that it's feasible. Okay. And so we're, we've worked through the Army Corps. Um, we're also asking a lot of questions about how much, right, right now we're worrying about how much does the fuel dock cost. Um, there's a tank that needs to be associated with it that needs to be up out of the floodplain. And so we're trying to make sure that all those pieces still fit together before it's, it's still up for debate whether it can actually happen, but we're trying to prove that it could happen. Then after that, there's a question of, well, how much does it cost? And then how big of a priority is it? It wasn't very high up the list as far as um, requests, but it is a nice amenity if you're out on the lake to not have to leave. But then the flip side is that we've also heard from people who have to wait to get onto the lake that if somebody runs out of gas, that's a great excuse for them to leave so that you can get on the lake. So it kind of limits, <laughs> it limits your time, right? <laughs> so there's a, lot of, there's a lot to consider with that one. Um, right now we're just trying to make sure that we have it in the appropriate location, know how much it would cost, and then I think we'll know more in the next month or so when we start to figure figure out where it hits in the priorities based on cost. And so we're getting there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Others? Yeah. Did you have a, uh, whenever you had it for the RV portion, I counted 13 different slips. I know that um, the current RV um, that 10 is year-round booked. So did you, are you guys proposing more than just the 13? Or is the visual indicative of how many you're actually going to propose? Or I think you're talking about the RVs that are at Central State Park. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's also the RV locations that we're proposing at Scissor Tail. Yep. So there's about 40 at Scissor Tail. The two okay. groups are 20 each, give or take, and then the ones at Central State. So, okay. yeah, it would be Thank considerably you. more RV spaces than you have right now. Okay. Um, I think this all sounds great. Thank you for, for doing this and, and so quickly putting all this together. The only things I kind of heard that I wonder about, because we always talk about staffing at the lake. It's a real problem. Um, 
so it seems like with all of this coming that we almost have to have a plan that just involves like how are we going to staff uh, this because it's kind of seasonal for a lot of it too. Um, and then kind of like the logistics of the boat staging. The boat staging sounds great, but with the two separate entrances for boats, I just didn't know how that would... And if, if other lakes have done this so that we could have a, a um, you know, reasonable kind of thing to look at and, and take cues from. Um, just a second. <laughs> um, the staffing, that's a good question. Um, and we can look we can look at that with Nicole and the lake staff. I think once we decide on the priorities and which amenities will come online, um, that'll be part of the pro forma as you move forward. You know that at this in year one, if we're talking about adding these amenities, then we can talk through that with her. That you probably need to add these staff members, and then that will roll into the financial analysis piece of it. That if you're going to add salary for you know, a few more full-time people, or would they be seasonal people, then their salary will roll into that. So that will be part of it. It'll just come at the very end. Um, but that information will kind of be some give and take um, with Nicole and what she knows um, that they, they need right now. And then the, the boat staging, um, we talked a lot about how it works right now and some of the pitfalls um, <coughs> with the way that it currently works. We looked at some other options, um, but this this one seems to be the best. Um, I looked at some other lakes that have limits similar to this one, um, and we talked about, we, we've even discussed maybe having things like kayaks, um, paddle boards, things like that, not counted in the 150, but um, the feedback that I've heard is that it's it actually does feel pretty crowded, and... So unless, you know, unless there's another perspective on that, um, I don't really feel comfortable introducing any more than the 150. I think it sounds like it's a pretty good number. Um, I think that this, this method, you're always going to have somebody manning the gatehouse during boating season, you know, and so you'll have somebody there. Um, we might have to look. I don't... Um, you're just going to have to have good communication now between both those gates to know, like, okay, 151, well, we've got a, the first spot guy here. we got the first spot guy at the next gate. Yeah, so do you, do you want to explain how that works yeah. now? So what, what she's proposing is something that we're already doing. It's just she's giving right now. We're Pardon. just trying to figure out a place <laughs> to do it and keep them out of people's way. This is just providing us an actual formal place to put these boats where they're out of the traffic line. That's and and we have a better visual with them so we can communicate a little bit better. This will actually be much better than, okay, nice, than nice. right now. But we, we've got a pretty good communication system down and a way to do it. We just need a place to put them that's a lot more. Mm -hmm. And you can look online, too, and see how many boats are on the lake, right? So at any given time before you head to the lake, you can see if you're going to be able to get on the water easily or if you might have to wait. You may even eventually go to... Like when you go to a restaurant and you get the little vibrator thing. Yeah. And you, all you gotta do is your vibrator goes off, you go and turn it in and go away. You're right. Chair for you. Oh no, thank you. Okay. I apologize, I got one more question. Hey, when it comes to getting on and off the lake, especially in the springtime and in the summers and on the holiday seasons, the, is there any idea or uh, the, the boat ramps are relatively small and you, uh, some of the experienced boaters you know, getting on and off. You might wait 15, 20 minutes to get off the lake as the sun is setting. Yeah, is there any uh, thought process of maybe adding a third uh, boat ramp, maybe at Spring Creek or some of the other places, and maybe expanding the docks out to where more than one boat can get off at one time and kind of get on and off a little bit faster during the peak times? Um, well, so what we looked at um, with regard to that was adding the boat ramp that was planned but not installed at Carl Rearman. <coughs> So the idea is that that will take some of that boat ramp traffic and give them a whole new park to get on and off the lake. Um, and so the hope is that some of the people that are currently using the other boat ramps, that they will go to Carl Rearman now, since there will be boat trailer parking and a boat ramp there to use. So I think that will help quite a bit. Um, we haven't actually discussed expanding any of the existing boat ramps. Okay. Um, hey, thank you. I was, I was just kind of curious. Yeah. Thank you. Sure.
So a, a couple of questions about uh, trash. I know that was mentioned high on the survey. I'm sure it's been uh, well baked into this, but there's a few questions, but I think I'd rather just kind of let you speak more generally about the topic and how you're addressing that with the needs in Edmond Park with the new, you know, trash collection system. And just if you could touch on that a little bit more, that would be great. Uh, well, I would love to speak about the trash collection system, but honestly, it's been several months since I was passed that information from Nicole, and so I'm probably not the best expert on how that's going to function, but I know, um, I believe it's new trucks, new trash cans, easier way of picking up trash from campgrounds. Is that kind of the summary? Yeah, it'll, it'll, we're looking at going to a residential-style cart, which will hold a little more than double what our cans hold now. And um, with that, we'll have a, a bed that's a compaction bed, and it'll have a cart tipper, so we'll be able to handle it with less labor, more efficiently. It'll hold more. Um, we'll be able to service more areas before we have to go and then empty the truck, that sort of thing. And it is in the process of working its way through right now. And then we also looked at... Um We've, we've been included on some discussions that the city of Edmond has been having with um, Oklahoma City and the idea of trash that's coming in from the Deep Fork and that issue and maybe having a boom at some point that kind of collects some of that trash and then the boat that would be needed to come and pick the trash up out of the water. And so that's another piece of the master plan that you'll see. And it's going into the master plan, even though there's not a formal decision yet on how to handle that, so that it will help to push that issue forward and um, remind everyone what the need is and what's been discussed so far. Right. Now, yeah, the, the boom and the need for the trash collection as it comes in via water has definitely been a, a subject of, you know, priority, at least from the park sport. So I appreciate that, you know, mentioning that it's, still baked into the pie of the master planks. I think that's a really important component, but thank you so much for your presentation. That was great. I don't, no I don't have any other questions. All right, good. Other members? How about the public? If um, I know we've got some folks who have asked to speak. If you wouldn't mind stepping up to the podium so that our microphones can pick up your, you know, if you want to come first. Julie, thank you so much. Sure. There's several things that um, you may have already considered but that would be really helpful for people, um, the people that are going to be deciding which of these programs, which, which locations go online first. And there's a couple of problem areas that contour lines would be incredibly useful to have on here. Um, we've obviously got a drainage problem in Edmond. We've had it forever. And now we're developing the lake and we've already got drainage problems out there. Example specifically is that just caught me was your new equestrian location. Somebody in your planning, I'm sure, is aware that there is a dry creek bed right through the middle of that that floods big time. And and okay, and so your contours are going to help immensely, knowing if you've got an issue like that on on all of these. Um, so just a recommendation. It would be really helpful to have those superimposed, which is probably available GIS. Another is prevailing winds. A lot of your erosion problems out there are due to prevailing winds. And specific example, just, just one of them, is um, your proposed kayak place on, I forget the name of it, down there, Carl Rearman. It's facing right into the prevailing winds. It is going to be unusable more often than not. And um, one of the issues with your boat ramps is going to be the same issue. You need to look at where your prevailing winds are and try to, if you put in any new boat ramps, put them backside of where your winds are so that they're usable more often in the time. And the third thing that, that would, I think, be really helpful to the people that are going to be making the decisions on this is having some reasonable idea on each one of your projects how many trees you're going to have to take out to do the development that you want to put there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great comments. Thank you, ma'am. Hi. Uh, 
uh, Joe Miller with Oklahoma Earth Bike Fellowship. I'm the uh, trail boss out at Arcadia and supporting with the uh, U.S. Army Corps land portion. Um, one of the things you mentioned in the beginning was the desire to have a paved path or paths around the lake, but I didn't see anything mentioned in the plan about that. I was wondering if there was any plans for trails around the lake. <clears throat> Um, yes, I'm glad you asked. Um, sometimes it's hard to remember and hard to show just enough information but not show all of the information. Um, but yes, and actually um, our office a while back did the master plan for the whole 20 miles of trail around the lake. And so that, that will definitely be a part of this master plan. It's just, I guess I didn't show it because it's an old part. It's a master plan that's already been done, but it is definitely a part of this. And um, what I've been asked, too, is to look at the cost estimate for the pieces of the trail that haven't been completed. And so we're going to update those costs to today's dollars um, so that we have realistic costs for the remaining pieces. Um, we're currently working on the northwest segment of the trail, um, finishing up the design for that section now. Um, so, yes. Doesn't that get you a little excited about what you're hearing, <laughs> the plans and the things that are coming to uh, to Edmond? I know that we still have those planning things that still need to occur, but um, for our lake to be able to say these are things that we have on the books and what a, what a great time for Arcadia Lake. Other comments? <coughs> you, were, you were free to stay the rest of our meeting. I'd love to have you. We're going to go ahead and conduct other business. Julie, do you have anything you want to say closing? Thank you all. I really appreciate your comments. Thank you. Um, you guys are a great community to work with, and I've gotten you know, a lot of help, so I just really appreciate it.